Hey everyone, and welcome. In a lot of the games that we review from replays submitted by our subscribers, we've noticed that a common error from players that are low diamond and below is that they don't properly snowball winning lane matchups. So today, we'll be analyzing how I close out Illusion Nami into Ezreal Pike lane in a diamond elo game. Some of you might be thinking, well, that should be a pretty one-sided lane, and you'd be right, it is. But even so, I'm sure at least a majority of you wouldn't have a clear idea of how to exactly dominate and snowball this lane matchup, especially in Diamond Elo. By the end of the video, you'll have a stronger understanding of the do's and don'ts of playing strong lanes into weaker ones. We'll also be pointing out some of the major mistakes the enemy committed that made things easier for me to win the lane. First, let's briefly break down the matchup from both sides. Lucian Nami have the advantage in just about everything, pushing, trading, sustain, and scaling. The only thing the Ezreal Pike lane has going for them is the ability to set up ganks with Pike, since Nami in particular is a vulnerable champion. So, our main goal as the Lucian lane will be to trade as often as we can, but without trading recklessly into the Pike's spells when we're on their side of the lane. This means playing around his cooldowns when we're pushing. This way, we make it less likely that we'll die to a gank. On the other hand, the Ezreal Pike lane's primary goal should be to conserve their HP as best they can so that they're healthy enough to call for and force a gank or all-in if Lucian ever pushes up to their tower while Jarvan is bot side. This means using E as early as possible in trades to disengage damage, and to give up CS whenever necessary, especially when the wave is pushing in. Alright, let's get into it. This may be getting old, but as usual, I'm starting the game with an invade. Invading the enemy tribush from red side has too good of a success rate to pass up, granted we take the proper path, and we are invading into insane level 1 champions like Braum. Speaking of path, note how I backping my team as they start the group on the wrong side of Tribush and ping the correct path to take. We've mentioned it before, but taking this roundabout path is important to successfully invade the Tribush. The reason being, if they're sitting and waiting in Tri, they'll see us much earlier if we walk in from here as compared to if we hug the wall walking in from here, due to us avoiding their line of sight by entering from this corner. Thankfully my team listens, and I lead with a ward as we face track and find no one. If we invaded later, like at around 1 minute, this would be a good time to call it off so we don't risk screwing our solos and jungler. But in this case, we invaded early enough that we'll have time to sweep through their jungle before our laners have to get to their lanes. And here, we see why it's so important to ward that tribush on our way in. As we get to the red buff, we see the enemy returning to their jungle from their own invade, thanks to our ward and tribush. Without that ward, we probably end up getting seen on our way out and lose any opportunity to deal good damage level 1. With the ward though, we could properly make the decision to sit in this bush and wait for the enemy to face check. After picking up the kill on Jarvan, I make sure not to waste time chasing so that I can give Poppy a proper leash without being too late to lane. Eventually, we arrive to lane in time to pick up all the melee last hits. Afterwards, I actually start misplaying a bit. We'd usually say, when you have a trade dominant matchup and you've cleared the minions first, you should stop autoing and look to trade on enemy last hits and autos on minions, while building up your own slow push. But in this case, my Q is down, so I should only be staying behind my ranged line and looking to punish last hits. My lack of patience ends up giving a couple free autos to the Ezreal, and when Pike lands a nasty hook on the second wave, my Q ends up whiffing. On the second wave, I want to look for a trade with my level 2. However, my mistakes on the first wave put me at a bit of an HP deficit, so I give ground when Ezreal looks for Qs through the wave. Here, Ezreal shows a mistake though. He initially did a good job of giving ground as I hit level 2, as you should always do when you're behind on the push and especially versus a champion like Lucian. But then, he stops and turns to auto a minion. This auto not only ends up costing him a ton of HP, but it wasn't even for a last hit. And even if it was, he still shouldn't have stopped running here. The wave is already pushing in towards him, so he should have simply kept walking back and waited for my minions to get a little bit lower. I end up jumping on the chance to fight, aggressively dashing forward and trading heal for Pike Ignite. It was a bit of a sloppy HP trade, but since we have to sustain advantage, I'm fine with removing their kill pressure and setting myself up for more trades at level 3. At this point, my main objective is to crash this minion wave to the tower as quickly as possible without losing minion last hits. Now, we've been focusing lately on your decision making regarding what to prioritize when crashing early waves to tower. 
If you were Lucian here, would you go for a ward, tower damage, harass, or continue the push? Some of you might have said to ward, which is usually a good call, but in this case, we just saw Jarvan in the topside jungle thanks to Poppy's aggressive play. Warding is good and all, but since we know where Jarvan is, we don't actually have to ward for safety for about another minute. Tower damage and harass are both too aggressive as well, since we're against a pike under tower. So instead, I simply continue pushing while backing off once my wave is thinned out, and returning to pressure with the next incoming wave. But wait, some of you might be wondering, why didn't I execute the 3 wave plan and look to bounce the wave here, considering I'm strong enough to all in, and I'm against the melee support? Well, there's a few reasons. Again, I know where Jarvan is, so I'm not concerned about keeping the pressure on and pushing for a bit. And, it's dangerous to push into tower against the pike, but as long as I take care to bait out his spells, I can still look to trade aggressively afterwards, even if the wave is all the way out here. Since we're in front of their tower, Pike is more likely to be trigger happy with his cooldowns, and Ezreal is more likely to feel safe enough to give me an opening. Now, if you aren't totally confident in your mechanics yet, I wouldn't necessarily recommend playing like this. Bouncing the wave here is definitely the safer macro level play, especially if I didn't know where their jungler was. But if you're looking to abuse a lane dominant matchup like I am in this game, then you don't have to bounce the wave in a situation like this. After applying some pressure to bait out Pike Hook and turning level 3, Ezreal walks up and eats a full combo to the face. Nami gets excited and ends up whiffing her ignite too, but that's no problem. However, as some of you might have noticed, it's worth noting that I probably shouldn't have gotten this trade off if Ezreal was playing decently. His support just missed Hook, and these ranged minions are easily within his Q range. So, the correct play at this point for him would be to last it with Q, or at least with autos behind his minion line, until Pike's Q is back up. But he does the exact opposite of this, and walks up for a W auto in a matchup where he has weaker damage and sustain. This was an error by Ezreal on all kinds of levels. At this point, if the Ezreal had TP, I would have looked to clear a couple minions for gold and back immediately, to keep the wave shoving into me, and to return before he has a chance to TP and crash the wave. But luckily, Ezreal took heal, so I have time to crash this wave before my back. Now, here's a tip that I'm sure even some of you diamond players don't do often enough. When you're pathing from base and the enemy is slow pushing out from their tower, you don't necessarily have to path straight to your lane, because the wave is eventually going to crash anyway and you'll be able to farm at that point. Knowing this, I path to Scuttlecrab instead with the intention of warding for mid before I return to bot lane but I actually end up catching their Jarvan on Scuttle Crab, and manage to deny the crab while landing a decent amount of damage on him before returning to lane. It may not seem like much, but it's small differences like these that can lead to large advantages, especially in the higher elos. With good vision, once I return to lane, my main focus is to thin the wave out. From here, should I continue pushing, or let the wave push towards me for an all-in? Considering how we didn't bounce the wave earlier, some of you might have answered to keep pushing to maintain our lane pressure. However, we know that Jarvan just exited into his bot side jungle, and he has no camps in his top side to farm. This is crucial, and it's reads like these that players in all elo ranges tend to miss, leaving themselves more vulnerable to throwing a winning matchup. Jarvan has nothing to farm at the moment besides his double golems so it's only natural that he should look to gank bottom once he's done farming those. So, I have to play assuming he's looking to gank bottom. However, that doesn't mean I need to back off of the wave. In fact, I want him to gank bottom, since I know I'm a lot stronger in the 2v2, and I want to soak up pressure if possible. So, when Ezreal misses a Q and the wave is thinned, I go for an E auto cancel trade to burst him out, immediately walking away afterwards knowing that Jarvan will be around. At this point, as long as I dodge pike spells and save flash for the Jarvan, Turning the gank should be easy, since Ezreal is too low to commit. Ezreal ends up failing his heal, and we pick up a free kill on the Jarvan. It's plays like these that truly snowball your advantage in a lane dominant matchup. By pathing the river out of base when I had wave priority to spot J4, and then reading and baiting the gank by chunking them out without committing for an all-in, I've managed to spread my lead from bot lane to influence the jungle matchup. From here, my only objective is to crash this fat wave. 
Now, what should my next move be as I crash this wave? Some of you might have said tower damage since we've bought items, or to harass since we have a big enough wave. In fact, I can't help but auto the tower a couple times myself, but I definitely have to ward here since Draven's Red is spawning soon. Even after we've warded though, I still need to look to play back since the wave is a bit too far up and Draven hasn't shown, especially when Pike starts walking up. This is important. It's easy to make a mistake here by feeling overconfident and looking to punish Pike. But when the wave is this far up in the lane and you don't see the jungler, your biggest priority should be to respect the enemy and to stay alive until the threat of a gank is gone. So I kite backward, only looking to turn on the Ezreal once Pike uses his hook, since at that point I can probably survive if Draven still forces a gank. With Ezreal chunked, all I need to do is crash the wave for a reset. Now, we've recreated the scenario where he's pushed in and I have a chance to make a play from base with my tempo advantage. But this time, we already have solid vision mid, and I know that the enemy has no wards at all in bot side since we never gave them a chance to push far enough out to place any. So instead of walking into lane, I simply wait in river, sitting in the bush and waiting for the enemy to go for vision after pushing the wave. Eventually, Ezreal finally pushes out and decides to go for a ward, giving up a free kill and basically ensuring the lane is over. Alright, that about covers it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned something about knowing when and when not to apply the 3 wave plan with a lane dominant matchup, pathing straight to river instead of to lane when you've backed with a tempo advantage, reading and baiting ganks by watching the enemy jungle's camps, and patiently waiting for vision plays when you've backed with a tempo advantage and you know that the enemy has to ward. On the other hand, if you find yourself with a weak matchup like the Ezreal did here, remember to respect the matchup by walking back and avoiding damage when the wave is pushing in, and to avoid picking fights when your support spells are on cooldown. Thanks for watching, and see you all next time.